We are back with another Passport. This time, this is a 2023 Honda Passport EXL in Platinum White Pearl with the black interior. So when the Passport first debuted, you were able to get a Sport and that was the lowest trim level, but Honda discontinued that trim level. Now the EXL is gonna be a lowest trim. We're gonna start off on the front of the Passport. So this is very similar to the Pilot. Well, before the Pilot got refreshed, but this is pretty much on a Pilot chassis, just no third row. And this is six inches shorter than the 22 Pilot. But for 23, it's been a redesign. And I'm assuming for 24, this will get the same redesign. We just gotta wait and see. On the EXL, you do have your projected beam headlights there, regular bulb high beam. Um, you do have regular bulb turn signals and there's no fog lights on this model. So you, you will have to go up to a Trail Sport or Elite if you want fog lights. The, you have this chrome piece on the grill here. And the grill itself is kind of like a gray finish. It's not gloss black or anything like that. And uh, you do have the emblem for the radar behind the H. And then, of course, you have your cooling up there, more cooling down below. And you have these bumper uh, curtains here, which is actually real. Actually real. On the EXL, you get 20s that are standard. And these are 265, 45, 20s. If you get an Elite, you also get 20s, same size. But if you get a Trail Sport, you get a smaller rim, which will be 18s, and a more tire wall, just to help you out for your off-roading and all that good stuff. On the side here, the mirror caps are half body colored, half just regular black, nope, not painted at all. And around the windows, it's black as well too. There's no chrome at all. You do have LED turn signals on the side mirrors, which is pretty cool. The door handles are body colored, and the platinum white pearl is such a beautiful color. It's so bright out here, and this one is a little dirty, so I don't know if you can see it on camera, but it's actually pretty nice. And we come around to the rear. Now, on the EXL, it, it's pretty interesting. So Honda has it where this is full red, but on the Trail Sport, this will be clear. And I think the Elite, that will be clear too. So different type of design cue that Honda went with the models, but you do have the big exhaust coming out the back. You rarely see these on this side of vehicles anymore. And you have the parking sensors in the back. You also have parking sensors in the front as well and then right below the honda uh emblem here just regular black wiper all-wheel drive badge passport that's pretty much it none too crazy but i do like the redesign of the rear bumper because they did redesign the passport well they refreshed the passport so they changed the wheel design they changed the front bumper they changed the rear bumper they changed the fenders the hood everyone complained that the pre-refresh was too minivan like and i may have one here's the key for the passport so the passport doesn't have the new honda key that everything else has the ridge line i think this still is using this older key and i think the odyssey as well so if we do get a redesign for 24 which i think we might it may get the new key you have lock you have unlock you have remote start and you do have a power tailgate so you hold this guy it will open and close the power tailgate so that's on all levels and then you have your panic button there as well but let's close that thing out and because you have the smart key you do have smart entry so if you put your hand in the door handle it'll unlock for you and if you push the button here it will lock all the doors for you and the key has to be nearby has to be in proximity so jump in, jump in here and the interior this is the black interior as you can see the white stitching all around and for the seating, it is power on the driver's side. And you have in and out for your lumbar, front and back for your, your seat, forward and back for the whole seat, up and down for the seat, and up and down for, I guess it's like a tilt. You can like tilt the whole seat this way. It's an interesting um, position you can do. But on the door here, you have the gas cap, you have the button for your power trunk, you have auto up down for driver and passenger window, you hold it for the rear you do have power locks you have memory seats and on the key itself you do have a number on the back of the key so it'll let you know which key you got driver one driver two and you can save your seat position your mirrors and some settings in the screen to a key which is cool so it's customizable but just in case you have each other keys you still have the number on the door on the passenger side the seat is power it's a four-way so forward and back and forward and back for the back of your seat. And that's pretty much it, no up and down.
right up here on the left, you do have your parking sensors on and off. You do have some of your Honda sensing features to toggle them on and off. So that's for your frontal collision braking and that's for your lane keep assist, traction control on and off, power mirrors, so your controls there. You have your econ assist button there. You can turn that on to help get you better gas mileage. Um, it does take a little bit longer to get up to speed and even the air and the AC goes down just a little bit to help you know maximize fuel efficiency. But let's jump in here. Seats are comfortable and it has a good step in as well too. It's not too high, not too low. You have a little Honda symbol there. Engine start button there. Put on brakes, push that guy. And then you do have a digital screen in the middle. I believe that's like a five inch display in the middle. And then you have your analogs on the outside. And the steering wheel is leather and perforated, wrapped for where you grip it, which is cool. The rest of it is leather wrapped. You can see the white stitching in the middle. And with this helper screen in the middle, you have a digital speedometer, you have a tachometer. Also, you can view different information. Right now, it's on, um, who have their seat belts on, on and off. You can see it there. But you can hit the little home button here, and that'll bring up your menu. Actually, let me dismiss this. Is giving me all the warnings, what's on, what's off. There we go. So you hit the home button there, and then you have your trip computer, all-wheel drive torque, phone settings, music, oil life. We got the seatbelts on, which we were just on. A different settings, kilometers to miles per hour, and nothing. So a lot of people probably will keep it on the trip computer. And on the left side here, you do have voice command, hang up the phone, answer the phone. This is what I use to control that screen up there. You hit the house to bring up all your menus. You have volume here, next track, previous, even a back key too. So very, very configurable. Um, you do have power shifters on the back of the steering wheel to shift up or shift down if needed to. And you do have auto uh, headlights and you have on parking lights, no fog lights, switches. And you do have a rear wiper and front wiper as well. And your controls is all there. Unlike the new 23 Pilot, you do still have a foot pedal emergency brake instead of the electronic one. So since you got this, you don't have brake holes, so keep that in mind. And the blind spot monitoring is standard on all passports. So far, Honda hasn't been making any, um, I guess, models that's with a blind spot or without blind spot. I know with the Civics and the HRVs and the Accords, it's been a mess with blind spot, no blind spot. But so far in the bigger SUVs, I haven't seen anything yet. And this little square right here is where it is. So it's on the inside instead of it being on the mirror itself, which is pretty cool. And for your display right here, so it's not the latest Honda Link, but it's not the oldest either. It's not like the Ridgeline. Um, you do have Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. It is touchscreen. Um, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto is not wireless though. It won't wireless. Um, that's in the Pilot. I'm assuming for the refresh, then it'll be wireless in these, but None of the trim levels have wireless Apple CarPlay Android Auto. You still have Bluetooth, though. Bluetooth is wireless, but this, you have to plug your phone in. You do have a built-in text messaging, but everyone probably prefer to use the Apple CarPlay Android Auto system. FM back here. And this is all customizable. You have satellite radio, AM radio. Um, you do have My Honda Music. So you do have, you can store music onto the vehicle. You have a social playlist where you can have multiple smartphones connected to the Passport, and everyone can suggest what to play next, which is pretty cool. USB, auxiliary, I don't know who's using that anymore, but at least you still got it. AM's tucked away back here, and you have Honda Link as well. But you're probably most going to be using this first page, and you do have some shortcuts over here. So you have home, back, brightness, and then these three up here are shortcuts that you can set that's always going to be there, no matter which menu you're in. And then the middle is going to be your source, so what you're listening to, and then time. And as you come down here, you do have a tri-zone climate control. This is what I love about the Passport. Even though you don't have a third row, the driver, the passenger, and the rear passengers can have three different temperatures, which is pretty cool. You, or you can have sync. You can control all of them at one time. Your modes, fan speed, AC, basic stuff. Um, auto. You have auto climate control. And you can turn the rear on and off if you wanted to. And you do have front defrost, heated side mirrors, and heated back glass. You do have heated seats, high, medium, and low. Um, if you want the ventilated front seats, you have to get the Elite. Even the Trail Support don't have cooling or ventilating seats. But you do get a wireless phone charger, and uh, you do get a power outlet and a US USB 2.5. And this is where you plug in to use Apple CarPlay. Some storage right here. And then you come to the glove box over here. It is lockable with the built-in key and simple uh, bin style. None too crazy in there. And then you can see the passenger seat here. Just to give you another design. Um, these are the bucket seats with these armrests, which is cool. 
Now, I believe this is not adjustable on the passenger side, but the driver's side, you can adjust how high you want it open. How, how high you want it up. Not how high you want to open. What am I talking about? But, but yeah, but this side is one level. But that's pretty cool. Coming down to the transmission, it is a 9-speed automatic transmission. You don't get a 10-speed, like that's in the new Pilot. But this transmission is still pretty good. And it is a push button, so instead of having a shifter, you push a button. So you have reverse, you have neutral, you have drive, you push it again. S is for sport. Put that guy back into park. It even highlights what gear you're in, and it'll show you down here as well. You can put the transmission in different modes. So this is what this guy is for. So you have normal, snow, mud, and sand. And you do have your auto stop off uh, feature for the engine as well because most of these new cars come with the standard so if you everyone turn it off then you can and then you do have this huge compartment in here with another power outlet down in there and a 2.5 usb and auxiliary but it's huge down here too and you have this little tray you can put coins and all types of good stuff back there and as you come up here you do have home link built in on the exl so home link garage openers or, um, well, and you have an auto dimming rear view mirror. I don't know what I'm talking about. Or moonroof too, standard on all the trim levels. So even though this is the, the base model, this thing is still well equipped. You don't get the little who threw that Cheeto mirror, but you do get a sunglass holder, which is cool. And then this is the controls for your moonroof and your lights. And they're not LED, regular bulbs. And you have your vanity mirrors here too, regular bulbs. But at least you got it. Because on the new Accords and CRVs, you don't even get Homelink standard anymore. You have to add an accessory. So with the Passport, it's, it's standard. So let's get to the back seat. Check out the rear. And you can see how wide the rear doors open. Nothing too crazy. So on the door here, you have cup holders. You have additional storage. And then you can have the same leather seating with the stitching back here. Also get an armrest with the cup holders. I like how it kind of floats down there. It don't just lean all the way down to the bottom. And then as I get in here, this is probably why you want to buy this instead of a CRV. Way more leg room behind the driver. It's wider too. It's easier to sit three back here. And you do have matte pockets behind the passenger seat. Pockets behind the driver's seat. You do have your air vents. So you don't have the controls back here for the third row, but at least you can control up front. And you have two 2.5A USB, USB A's. No USB C's are in the 23 Passport. Pretty roomy. Give you guys a, a view of the cockpit here. If you wanted to, you can fold these seats down flat. Just like that, pull over a handle. Also, these seats can move forward and back. So there's a bar underneath you can adjust to pull forward and pull back. We'll get to the rear. Because like I told you earlier, it does have a power tailgate. All the passports have a power tailgate. And because you don't have the third row, like what the pilot has, you have all this additional space back here. Like if you see one of these in person, it's, it's, it's like, it's crazy how much room you have back here. Now the spare tire is under the floor here instead of it under the vehicle. Also, the passport does have a high load floor. So that's something to, to be mindful about, but it's huge back here so if you lift this guy up oh, this thing here. oh yeah this is the cargo tray too so this is something you can add on to your passport if you wanted to but it would just be regular carpet but you have additional storage under here and then you see there's like a little missing piece right here because you put your hand there and you can lift it up and show additional storage so spare tires under here subwoofer is over there you even have your uh, your funnel over there but yeah and you have storage on the sides as well. You have a power outlet back here. So it's very configurable with the uh, Passport. And if you wanted to, you can push this button and drop the seats. Easy. And then with the seats down, look at the space that you got. It's crazy. It's crazy how much room you have back here. That's one thing I love about the Pilot. It's just, not the Pilot, the Passport. It's just very roomy. Before we jump into the brochure, I'm gonna put this thing in reverse so you guys can see the back of the camera. So you have a wide angle, you have normal, and you have top down. And because you have blind spot, you also have cross traffic too. So it alerts you if someone's coming from the left or from the right as you're backing up. But wide angle is actually pretty good because for example, this is straight behind us. See how you can see that black car over there and that's pretty much it. I go to wide angle, 
the black car is right there, and then you see these two cars. It's actually crazy wide, and like that's how wide it is. Those two white cars is what we're seeing in the backup camera. Here we are on the passport trim walk. So, one thing I love about the passport is there's three trims. It's easy to shop for. EXL is your new base model, and because EXL is your new base model, starting price on the passport is now higher because the sport trim is gone. But now you have way more standard equipment. So. All passports will have the 3.5 V6, same motor that was in the previous generation pilot now. Um, 280 horsepower, 262 foot-pound of torque, all-wheel drive system. And I'm not going to read through this list because this is like kind of all the basic stuff that you get. You can pause the video, read this, or go to Honda, uh, uh, no, HondaInformationCenter.com and you can read this as well too. But I kind of do want to go over some basic stuff on here, so... Um, Honda Sensing, you can see the whole suite of standard. Uh, let me see, B -b -b auto high beams, blind spot monitoring, cross traffic monitoring, parking sensors, uh, leather trim seats, heated front seats. I know I went over most of this. Um, I forgot to show you guys the moonroof. It has a one touch power moonroof and it's a normal moonroof. You don't have no panoramic roof like in the new pilot. Maybe in the next generation passport, they'll add the panoramic roof, but on passport, Normal moonroof on it, and that's it. Um, you see power seats, leather steering wheel. So most of this I went over in the video. I don't think, yeah, tri-zone. Yeah, most of this I went over in the video. So you guys should be pretty uh, informed. Now the sound system, this is important to discuss. This is a 215 watt, um, seven speaker with subwoofer uh, sound system, and it's a Honda sound system. There's no aftermarket brand. And there's no aftermarket brand in any of the passports. The current pilot right now give you a Bose system in the Touring and Elite, but in the passport, it's just Honda's traditional system. Same thing, next generation. Maybe they may uh, follow the pilot's uh, suite there. But that's pretty much it. So let's jump into the pricing and colors. Here we are on Honda's website. I'm on the passport. I'm acting like I'm building one. Here's the three models. And we're gonna jump into the EXL. And I'm going to grab, well, let me show you the colors we got. Oh, by the way, all-wheel drive is standard on all the passports. So there's no more two-wheel drive. I mean, no one really wanted it because I believe the Sport and the EXL came with two-wheel drive. And I think before the trails were at a Touring, and I think you were able to get two-wheel drive in the Touring, Elite was always all-wheel drive, if I'm not mistaken. When they refreshed the Passport, got rid of the Touring trim, got rid of the Sport trim, added the Trail Sport. I believe EXL, was you was able to get a front-wheel drive in Trail Sport and Tour in Elite were only all-wheel drive. Now for 23, they're all all-wheel drive only, that's it. So yeah, you got that, here's your colors. For the EXL, you have Crystal Black Pearl, Lunar Silver Metallic, and Obsidian Blue Pearl, which is one of my favorite colors on the Passport. And those three top, those three colors that's named, there's no premium price for them. But if you get Platinum White Pearl, Radiant Red Metallic 2, or Sonic Gray Pearl, it's 455 more. So being that we did the white one, I'm sure you guys the white one, and just kind of give you a base price. So it's 41,100 plus the premium color, 455. Destination and handling is 13,45. You're looking at 42,9 total for the MSRP. Now your dealership may have markup. Um, I don't think passports are really marked up as much because I know um, this don't sell as well as the CRV and the Civic and stuff like that too. So you may get these for MSRP or maybe under. I don't know. Um, I know here in my region. It's I it's hard to have passwords on a lot. So I'm actually recording this, I don't know, like maybe a month since I actually recorded this pipe this passport. And this passport sold the same day that I after I was done with it, it was available. It sold right after that. So I can't keep passwords on a lot. But that's what you're looking at. And let's go back and look at so white that we just reviewed. You can get it with black or gray. Um Pilot used to have a ivory interior or the beige i think they called it beige and they got rid of that and for passport you don't have the beige either it's either black or gray but it depends on the color so if you get black i think it's black only yeah black is black only silver is black only oh silver is gray only look at me don't know what i'm talking about all right blue is black only i don't know what i'm talking about uh blue is gray only um i'm just messing with you guys i know i'm saying Actually, no, I did forget, but obsidian blue usually always come with gray interior. I don't know why I said black. White usually give you multiple interior colors. 
and red is black only. Red usually, no, that's a basket red. Okay, never mind. And then you have Sonic Gray. Sonic Gray always comes with black. I know that for sure. Yeah. So those are your, all your colors and your interior options. And with wheels, you have the options. You can get 20s. With the wheel options, you're able to get, uh, hey, these are standard 20s. I don't know what I'm talking about. I don't know what I'm just talking about. Uh, you can get the 18-inch HPD wheels or 20-inch um, HPD wheels. I will go with the 18 inches all the way. If I get like an Elite, I'm putting the 18s on there. Like, I love the 18s, how they look. They look so aggressive. Um, bronze is okay. Let's go back to that, go back to that guy. But with packages, remember, um, passports have PPO packages. So from Honda, um, passports will come to the dealership already, like with, with accessories already installed from Honda. And you actually save money if you get a, a passport with a PPO package because you don't have to worry about paying the dealership's um, installation fees and labor. Because Honda installed it from the factory, it's actually cheaper versus you adding the same exact accessories at the dealership. Because the dealership is going to charge you installation and handling and shipping and all of the good stuff. With Honda, you pay for the part and fit. So um, when you're shopping for one, the MSRP may look different. If you look at three EXLs, all three of them might have a three uh, a different MSRP because two of them can have uh, a PPO package, so post-production package. One of them probably don't have nothing on it. So be mindful of that. But I do I do know nowadays most dealerships are adding their own accessories and whatever. So that's that's a whole that's between you and your dealership pretty much. But um, with the PPO package, so let me see. It looks like there's only three. Passport will either come in at with an HPD package already from Honda or a utility package. I could have sworn there was another one. There is another one. There's a package where I don't know why it's not shown on here, but it comes with the cargo net, I think cargo net, cargo cover, and a first aid kit. Because I've reviewed a few of those on my other channel. And I think this channel too. I think the passwords I did on this channel had that PPO package on there. So and that package is it's it costs way lesser than all of these. I don't know why it's not here on the Honda website. Maybe they're going to get rid of it. I don't know. But anyways, we're going to end everything here. I hope you guys enjoyed my Passport uh, walk around. And make sure you check out my Trail Sport walk around and my Elite walk around. I did all the Passports. And once the 24th come out, you already know we're doing all the trim levels on the 24th. Thank you guys for watching. I'm going to catch you guys in the next walk around.